years, Afghanistan has been fighting a cold, hard war against landmines. It has been extremely successful so far, but with another 10 million mines in the ground, it's probably going to take the dogs of peace at least another seven years to clear the land completely. Yeah. The Afghan dogs of peace are now specially bred to sniff for mines. It makes them better sniffers and more successful. Young Jamie is the only puppy of his age going through the dog demining school at the moment. However, there are eight other younger puppies close behind him. Some of these men are former freedom fighters, the Mujahideen. They have some horrific stories of war to tell, but working with these dogs is having an amazing effect on them. Not only will these dogs save individuals by uncovering landmines when they grow up, but they are already helping many of these former men of war. For 20 years, some of these men have faced the horrors of war. Now, these little puppies are having a therapeutic effect on the men by psychologically helping them come to terms with a life without combat. Ironically, Islam, the religion of the handlers, does not encourage such closeness between man and dog. According to many teachers of the Muslim Bible, the Quran, dogs are to be treated like pigs, saying they're unclean and should not be kept as pets. The Quran does recognize that dogs can be workers, but it teaches that if a Muslim has to work with a dog, then special clothes must be worn, and when the work is done, the worker has to wash himself thoroughly. While these handlers are keen to observe the rules of Islam, their contact with the animals is turning into genuine affection. As well as helping former fighters, these little puppies are inspiring a new generation of Afghan children. Because there are no pets, only working animals in Afghanistan, children are not quite sure what to do when they have a close encounter with a puppy. For these children, this puppy may as well be an alien. They simply don't know how to respond. At first, they shy away, afraid of a puppy that most children would immediately want to embrace. For Faisal and Zahid, this is the first time they've had a chance to play with a puppy. Though they are no longer fearful, they seem a little awkward. These two boys are, among other things, victims of landmines. People bury them under the ground and you can't see them once you step on them, it will explode. To look at them, you wouldn't think so. They have all their limbs, their fingers, their eyes, but they are victims of landmines, because you see, landmines not only kill and maim, they create refugees. They told us that the life in Kabul was beautiful because your next door neighbor and all the other people were your relatives and friends, and like you could go over their house and like have a cup of tea or something. And then when the war started, everyone had to like separate and go to other countries and now the people hardly see each other in years. The threat of landmines have displaced these people. They have created refugees, the same refugees that flood into Pakistan and then made their way to Britain, Australia, France, Germany, Canada and the USA, all seeking a safe place to live. <laughs> 